Let's learn how to use the spindle sander. This is the spindle sander. If you ever need information about this, you can see there's a sign with a QR code that you can scan for more. Before you use the spindle sander, you need to make sure that the dust collector is on, make sure that the blast gate is open, and the blast gate opens and closes by twisting this thumb screw. That's closed, that's open. Make sure the thumb screw is tight so that the blast gate doesn't close through Venturi, print uh, through the Venturi action. It will actually suck that gate closed. Double check to be sure that the hose is connected to the machine. A couple things you need to know about this tool. First of all is that your fingers are always one inch away from the abrasive material. It's on a spindle drum right here. Okay. Also make sure that your work is on the spindle sander before you turn the power on. If I try to slide this down the shaft while it's running, it might grab it out of my hand and spin it around. This tool also has the ability to switch different size drums for sanding different radii. It is acceptable to switch these, but please ask first. Also, when you switch the drums, you'll need to switch the collar plate to find the one that best fits. Okay, this one obviously is too small. And this one would be too big. Your fingers would fall down inside, your work would fall down inside there. So make sure you have the correct piece on there. Also notice there's a little cutout right here. You can see it against this board that matches that little pin right there. This prevents the plate from turning inside when the machine is on. I like this tool just because of the goofy motion it makes. Try teaching this to a room full of teenagers. I'll turn it on and you'll see why. The power switch to the spindle sander is right here. Green button is on, red button is off. Before you turn the machine on, make sure your work is completely clear of the abrasive cylinder. Here we go. If I want to sand a piece of wood, I merely present it to the cylinder. And as you can see, this sands a lot slower than the horizontal edge sander. This machine is great for doing touch-up work, but not good for removing lots of material. If I wanted to sand inside this hole, the first thing I'm going to do is turn the machine off, place the wood on top, make sure it's clear of the cylinder, and then turn it on. At this point, I'm going to sand opposite the direction of the drum. So it's turning this way, I'm going to push my wood this way, and again, you can see that it's removing very little work. Okay, this is just for doing touch-up work. When I'm done, move my work away from the cylinder, take a step back, and turn it off. After it's stopped, I can remove this, clean up my mess, and I'm done. Every once in a while, especially if you're working inside a circle like this, you'll lose control and it will grab this and start flinging it around. Your safety is more important than the tool or your work. So the very first thing you're going to do is take your hands off and step away. Let it spin around in a circle. Who cares? As long as you're safe. Okay. Once you can establish a safe way to get to the power switch, looking at your work, you're going to lean down, watching your work the whole time and turn off the machine and wait for it to come to a stop. Make sure you give yourself room so you're not going to get hit by any flying wood. If you can't do that, simply walk away, find somebody who can help you, or a teacher. Once it stops flipping and flinging all over the place and the machine's at a stop, then you can take your wood off and scratch your head and wonder what it was you did to get there. When you're done, turn off the dust collector. And that is the spindle sander.